Hello and welcome to a special edition of 18 Insight where we're going to tell you what's likely to be the good, the bad and the ugly of business and economy this year. I'm Sridhar Ramakrishnan and here's what we have for you on the show today. Find out why there's good chance the economic cycle at least in the first half may turn even more vicious this year. The bad news is that India's beacon of hope, its rural market is slowing down as well and could well hurt the job market. But it's not gloom and doom all the way. We get you what's hot and happening in the world of cars, Bollywood and social networking. Our top story first. 2011 was a tough year for India. The stock market lost nearly 25% and the rupee 16%. The GDP growth target has been revised twice in the last six months and is down to 7.5% from 8.5%. Add to that a virtual policy paralysis in New Delhi and what you have is a country that's gone from being an emerging market darling to a pariah. So will the economy have to go through another year of pain? Nikhil Shivadas finds out. The party is coming to an end. And the Indian economy needs to brace itself for a long night ahead. Inflation is at an all-time high. Decisions are uh, at the government level are not being taken. Income disparity is becoming more and more wide. So there are fundamental issues which are facing the econ Indian economy. Unless we get our manufacturing right and unless our policy is right, 2012 will be worse than 2011. A lot depends on what happens globally as well as what happens uh, in India in terms of the reforms journey. But as of today, it, uh, all the signals point out to be not looking so good. The journey over the next 12 months is not going to be an easy one. And there will be several speed breakers ahead. Starting with the sliding rupee, which has been the worst performing Asian currency last year and lost 15% versus the dollar. So what's the worst case scenario for the rupee? Namura and Macquarie expect the rupee to reach 55 in 2012, whereas Bank of America, Merrill Lynch and CLSA see the Indian currency going down further and touching 58 to 60 rupees to a dollar. For the remainder of 2012, I think rupee will continue to weaken against the dollar. And that to a large extent stems from our view that 2012 will be the year when dollar strength will actually continue to play out quite well. So what's putting pressure on the rupee? The biggest concern is the country's widening trade deficit. Simply put, India is earning fewer dollars than it is spending on imports. And unless this gap is made up by inflows into stock markets, industry or bank deposits, the rupee will remain under pressure. A weak rupee makes imports more expensive, especially crude oil. For instance, in December last year, India's crude imports rose by 8.2% and touched a historic high of 5,673 rupees per barrel. According to the Petroleum Planning and Analysis cell, the rise in prices meant that oil marketing companies had to book 388 crore rupees of losses every day versus 235 crore rupees earlier. Since India subsidizes fuel oils, a rise in imports directly takes a toll on the government's balance sheet, raising its social sector spending and widening the fiscal and current account deficit. And a wider current account deficit brings us back to where we started, a weaker rupee. When capital inflows ease off, uh, which has happened over the last few months, uh, the current account deficit then becomes the driving force uh, for the exchange rate. So the depreciation we've seen over the last few months, uh, clearly one important driver, the fundamental driver of that is the fact that we, are, uh, we have a current account deficit. A depreciating currency is bad news because it's inflationary. Several sectors like FMCG and consumer durables import raw materials as inputs. When the rupee falls, input prices rise and companies pass on the additional cost to consumers. A weak currency can have a catastrophic impact because rising prices are often controlled with higher interest rates which in turn tend to take a toll on demand, on industrial production and hence on growth. For instance, last year India saw interest rates rise 13 times by 375 basis points on account of stubborn inflation. That reduced corporate borrowings and led to a fall in industrial production which was down 5.5% year on year in October. Chances are that the same will happen in the first half of the current year too. 
We've had mixed signals. I mean, October industrial production level was negative. The growth rate was negative. The November uh, industrial production showed a big revival. The latest figures that we have for December uh, of the Purchase Managers Index, the PMI, which is kind of an indication of uh, demand in the system, uh, seems to show a big improvement. So I'm hopeful that in the third quarter of this year, we'll be able to say that the steady deceleration has come to an end. The increased economic uncertainty is taking a toll on India's banking system, which is finding itself saddled with loans that are degrading in quality. Rating agency Crucial points out that bank NPAs will increase to 150,000 crores by March 2012. That's nearly three times what it was three years ago. That's 3.1% of total banking advances compared to 2.3% in March last year. Crystal says that just 57% of these assets are under provisioning cover. The fear is that with the economy slowing down, Indian banks may see NPAs rising well above their own comfort levels. There has been a significant rise in quarter two and uh, therefore uh, I, I would be readily willing to concede that asset quality is definitely a challenge for the bank. RBI's concern is that NPAs in priority sectors and infrastructure are growing faster than outstanding credit growth. Bank loans to these sectors have grown from 4.7 lakh crore rupees last year to over 5.6 lakh crore rupees this year. And the central bank is concerned that continued lending to the infrastructure sector may lead to a severe asset liability mismatch, especially if the economy continues to slow down. However, some bankers insist that asset quality will remain stable in the year ahead. We believe that uh, many large sectors will suddenly go down the drain or to say that every infrastructure project is bad or to say that every power project is in trouble, I think is an over-exaggeration of uh, worry. Even so, restructuring assets and ensuring a cushion against worsening asset quality is sure to be a priority for banks and the RBI in 2012. However, the RBI cautions that this can only happen if the economy stabilizes. And that can only happen if there is good and effective governance. It's the same old bureaucratic nightmare in India. You have to get special permission. You have to, you know, go through uh, the currency controls. But why can't India? Why can't India do something without being full of bu bureaucracy? It should not have affected as much to India if India's act was together. Uh, its governance and its current political situations and that affects decision making. India, as we've seen over this FDI fighting in retail, got huge issues about proper leadership. To be fair, the government has tried its best to push for important policy measures like the goods and services tax, which has the potential to add up to 2% to India's GDP and FDI multi-brand retail, which could have helped control inflation and create millions of jobs. But political deadlocks with opposition parties have put the brakes on reforms. Will 2012 be any better? Perhaps not, especially if one were to go by the government's helplessness in passing the recent Lokpal bill. And that is the worst news. 2012 would have been dramatically different if the government could have pushed for economic reforms in a more aggressive and calculated manner. But that's far from happening. And now it seems like the vicious economic cycle will take India by storm. So India is in an ugly spot. But how is its engine of growth, the rural market, positioned in 2012? Catch that and more right out of this short break. Don't go away.